Canup, we're broadcasting from the Mabonang precinct. We're actually right here at uh, Arts on Main, and we've come upstairs to, I think it's a, a space events venue. I'm not too sure, but it's, uh, it's, it's a great space, I have to tell you, for eventing and, and also just to bring people down to the inner city of Joburg. And the reason we're here is this where the launch of uh, Tourism Month is taking place. And the focus this year is the Northern Cape. That's the province that's going to draw all of the attention this year. And it really, it deserves it. It's an amazing amazing province with uh, so many things to do, so many adventures to take. Now, we were chatting just before the 7 o'clock news to our new Minister of Tourism, uh, Minister Derek Honeycomb. He's with us still. He's agreed to stay on, which we're very happy about. And the two of us are even more happy because, let me tell you something, we are now surrounded by greatness. We are surrounded by these magnificent portraits by Adrian Stern, the 21 Icons Project. And isn't this just, it's a nice, nice feeling to be surrounded by all of these wonderful people. It's a great feeling yeah. and the photography is just stunning it is just absolutely superb yeah it is it truly yeah. is and and it's not just about these people these people are south africans mm. and it's the history in south africa it's that cultural mm. tourism that we have and we need to to enhance it more do you think we do you think we do enough to promote the cultural side of south africa i think we're doing a lot leanne but we could do a lot more and and to ensure that more people want to experience it because it's not just about going to see a place it's about feeling a place seeing a place not far from here for example is lily's leaf and that's the place where the rivonia tried us including cathrado who's standing here behind us that's the place where they were arrested and so i mean there's such a our country has such a rich history it's standing all around us over here yeah. and so we you know it's it instills pride tourism is is partly designed to expose people to your you, the, the wealth of your country, not just the natural beauty, but your heritage, your culture, and the entire offer of your country, so that you uh, not only live in a country, not only visit a country, but sort of feel its soul and really experience it. Yeah, you do. I mean, when you go to a country, you want to experience it. And I mean, I think so many people do come here, everybody obviously knowing our yeah. late former president Nelson Mandela. And, and what a photograph. Uh, that way. photo, yeah. it was amazing. I mean, this yeah. was one of the most iconic moments of, mm. of any photographer's career, but what an iconic moment to capture. Absolutely. And one of these last images that we've seen of Madiba and that we have of him, which is, 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 a, great, is a great thing. I mean, there's that, that Madiba tourism route, basically, of his whole life, where he'd been. Uh, not only, I mean, so many people flocked to Robben Island, but that's not where the journey, uh, the journey began many, many years before that. And we, we need to get the Eastern Cape on the map yeah. here in Joburg, everywhere. Uh, I think the Madiba Trail is a great initiative of SA Tourism and, uh, the, and other uh, players, including the Department of Arts and Culture. Uh, because many people, that's their, their strongest association with South Africa is the place where Nelson Mandela comes from, a world icon. It's not the only reason to visit South Africa ever, but most people would like to get a sample of it. And the nice thing about the Madiba Trail, it really is located in different parts of the country. It's where he was born, it's where he was arrested, it's where he spent time in jail, and you can do it in bits and pieces. So it's something that we want overseas visitors to experience or we want to offer it to them but we also want our local people to get a sense of it and to go out there to want to do it and to be able to do it yeah. robin island is a good example yeah. the um, you know there are many people living in cape town who've never been there partly because it's too expensive yeah. so we've got to find models leanne to make sure that even if it's not every day of the week that there are special days when even people from the poorest backgrounds are able to to experience uh, some of our rich history, some of our rich culture, and some things that are right on their doorstep that are inaccessible to them. Here in Gauteng, by, for example, we have the Cradle of Humankind, which is just an hour away from here, which is truly a world iconic site. And so we want to make sure that everyone living in Gauteng is able, once in their life at least, to go and visit the Cradle of Humankind, which is where we all come from. Yeah. Indeed we do. And I think you may have, or, or we, the, the cameraman may have got a shot of, of F.W. de Klerk, and what he's sitting, picture. meditating in the cradle of humankind. So that could convince you to go and visit that. That's an absolutely magnificent shot and place to go and visit as well. You touched on a very sensitive issue. I know I've got a link to an insert, which I will do in a short while. Things are too expensive for South Africans to enjoy. That's right on their doorstep. And it's, it's a fact. I mean, we try and go to a game launch for the weekend, and I've got to pay this, the equivalent of an overseas trip to go for the weekend and it, it is too expensive. 
is there not a possibility of having a South African rate and a tourist rate? It happens in other countries. Yeah. Why can we not have it here? Well, Leanne, it happens in some other countries. Uh, so it's, it's really a, a, a policy question. Um, I would not be in favor of it without wanting to make uh, serious policy pronouncements on this fun morning program. Uh, the, you know, tourists don't like it. They, they sort of uh, international tourists who come to visit your country and then you come in a group and part of the group would be your South African friends and you ask for a passport and you have your UK passport or your Chinese passport and you have to pay twice as much as the people you're traveling with and it, it's clumsy. It just doesn't work. It doesn't feel welcoming. What we need is what many places are doing, by the way, like the South African National Botanical Gardens, Kirsten Bosch, other places. They have free days. They have days when it really is accessible. They make it free or very affordable to pensioners and to young children. And there are days when it just is free entry day. Mm. And so it's those things that we want to extend to other places as well. Minister, thank you for talking to us again. Thank you for extending your time just to just to talk to us and uncover some other issues. And, and, and I've loved this cultural discussion that we've had and the cultural tourism here in South Africa. And uh, enjoy the month. It's a big month for South Africa. Enjoy it. A great month. And it is Heritage Month, by the way. Yes. So when we celebrate everything we have to offer, we really concentrate on our rich heritage and our rich history. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's our Minister of Tourism, uh, Derek Honeycomb, talking to us about uh, Tourism Month. As you know, September, massive Tourism Month here in South Africa. Uh, also celebrating our Cultural Heritage and World Tourism Day is on the 27th of September. So we'll certainly be doing something big for that as well. All right.